in their 37-17 win over the LA Wildcats. Oh my God, how do I remember the score of that game? I don't know, Mike. Maybe you remember the score of the game because it's simply your job to talk about sports all day. Mike Florio and some of the other staff at NBC Sports have, for whatever reason, began pushing this anti-XFL agenda. Um, and some of the reasons that they discuss, we're going to cover here and have some rebuttals for because I simply think that a lot of the things they're pushing are absolutely ridiculous ideas. And, and let's go over them and see why Mike Florio is kind of getting sick of, I guess, the hate he's getting for these ideas. For some reason, on social media, and they think anytime that I post anything that can remotely be construed as negative, that I'm getting paid by the NFL to say bad things about the XFL. No, there's plenty of bad things to say. The football is not anywhere close to NFL quality because they don't have anything nearly close to NFL quality quarterbacks. No, screw the quarterback conversation. Obviously, that's not good enough. The whole league lacks star power. You know, that's why we tune into NFL football because we want to see special. And they're special on every NFL roster. This notion that NBC tries to hammer home that the quality of play isn't as good as the NFL is something that is so blatantly obvious even before this season started. Even when the idea of the XFL was just announced, I think anybody who watched any football would have known that obviously NFL players were not going to up and leave the league to go play in the XFL. The XFL, though, is competing against nothing. There is no better football on to watch. It's either I watch the XFL or I watch someone like Mike Florio, the talking head, discuss different contract negotiations that are going to be going on this offseason and his own speculations. So the XFL is not competing against any real football. And because of that, I think that many of us, as an alternative to nothing, are willing to settle with this. But I also like the character development that the XFL offers with the sideline interviews. Now, Matt McGloin's outburst in last week's game against the Guardians just goes to show and build the character that is Matt McGloin, a, a character that I knew nothing about. I didn't know anything about Matt McGloin prior to the XFL starting. And now through these sideline interviews, I'm able to better understand you know, his frustrations and him as a person. And you can kind of take a side and if you like or dislike Matt McGloin because of how last week went. And because of those sideline interviews, I think that players are getting developed and we're understanding them better because of that. Then maybe you would even understand, you know, certain NFL players, you know, different backups. I know very little about Sean Mannion, even though he rode the bench for the Vikings this entire year. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not shocked. I mean, one, okay, I haven't watched one second. I haven't. It also doesn't help that some of the people that NBC Sports airs on these shows talking about the XFL are actually less suited to talk about the XFL than even I am as just a casual viewer. I actually know more about the XFL than Chris Sims, who's on here talking about it. The reason why you need some big names, and I know... You know, we've seen the Colin Kaepernick news the last couple of days about how he won a lot of money, which he should have because he's an NFL, you know, quarterback. But how about, uh, you know, Johnny Manziel or Tim Tebow? Like Johnny Manziel, they're not interested in him. Well, he's better than some of the quarterbacks that are playing in the XFL, and he has star power. This notion that XFL fans would rather see Johnny Manziel or good golly, even worse, the washed up scenario of Tim Tebow or Colin Kaepernick make it on an XFL field is laughable. And people talking like it's 2015. These names aren't relevant anymore. We know Johnny Manziel isn't any good anymore. We've seen him run his course multiple times. I don't think anybody wants to see him in the XFL again because they've seen him play in the AAF. They've seen him play in Canada. We know he isn't any good. And we know that Kaepernick and Tebow have been out of the NFL and out of football for so long that it just doesn't even make any sense for these players to play in the XFL. If you were Trevor Lawrence, the Clemson quarterback, who can't enter the NFL draft until April of 2021, what would it take? How much money would it take to get you to leave Clemson and play in the XFL? And knowing that you can do it this season and next season, how much per year? I would do it for $40 million. 40? Oh my God. I don't know if they're trying to make a real point here or if they're just kind of trying to poke fun at the XFL and the fact that they don't have $40 million to pay one player, obviously. And the fact that the pay isn't really very negotiable in the XFL, and it's my understanding that most of the players are paid the same rate, is something that I really like and I think it helps make this league 
feel more like an everyman type of scenario and really helps us feel more personally connected with them when we see them in these sideline interviews, you know, in the moments where they're most stressed. And the whole thing to me feels much more raw. It feels much more real than a traditional NFL game would. With that said, I'm going to continue watching the XFL. I've really been enjoying it. I would love to hear what you think so far. What do you think of these takes from NBC Sports and if some of their claims were warranted? Thank you guys for watching. I'm Bailey, and I will see you in the next video.